Hey everybody, welcome back. My name's David. Um, this is my 86 IROC sitting behind me. And this car has a date with destiny. We're gonna drive this car across America. We're gonna drive it from Tennessee to Ohio to do 2021 Power Tour, which ends in Illinois, almost in Chicago. So we're gonna jump on Route 66 or what's left of it and drive it all the way to LA and then back to Tennessee. It's about 5,500 miles. A long trip for a car that's been off the road for 15 years so i gotta get to work uh in this video i do jump around a little bit it just is what it is there's some stuff i just can't finish so i just can't slow down i just gotta keep moving um so just bear with me also i'd like to say thanks to everyone for watching i really do appreciate it um, i'd also appreciate it if you'd hit the thumbs up button and subscribe and if you hit the notification bell you'll know when i drop new material and if you feel like leaving a comment down below, I answer them all. All right, so this is good and set up. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of sandpaper and uh, get this thing ready. Oh, I just noticed another crack or two. I'm gonna fix those two while we're in this. I got it all sanded down. Hit it with some more satin black. Also did the uh, windshield wiper transmission stuff. I just wanted to clean it up while I had it all apart and I could, so. Everything turned out really nice. I'm happy with it. Uh, I'm going to go and see if we can't get some of this stuff put back on the car now. Call me Butterfingers. I rocked in the, in the garage, dropped this, cracked it all the way down through here, knocked another hole in it. So now I'm going to have to refix this, but I'm going to go ahead and start putting the dash and stuff back together. Uh, this can wait. All right, so we're going to do a little experiment out here. Very unscientific, but I have a floor pan piece that I had left over from the other car I'm building or was building and then stopped. But anyways, um, I've got a propane torch. We're gonna heat up a spot and then check it with the temperature gauge and then a spot that's just kill mat. And then I also have this Excel heat and sound insulation mat for firewalls. Uh, we're gonna hit just that and then we're gonna hit the two together and see if the temperature falls and how much it falls between the three or between the four the control being nothing all the way to the double so i'm gonna set this on a tripod and uh we'll go from there so let's hit this kill mat area hundred and fifty hundred and sixty This stuff's at about in the, I think I saw 83, yeah, 83, and on fire. Yes, that's, that's hot. Now we're gonna do where they're together. Currently 70. Get over here where I can see. Seventy three, seventy four, uh, and it's also smoldering. So you can see with both of those together, it'll keep the temp super, super low, and keep the heat out of the car. So it'll make for a really nice ride, especially across the desert, where it's going to be, you know, one hundred and twenty degrees. Asphalt's probably going to be closer to one fifty. So I can't wait to get all this in. Let's just get after it. All right, so I got all the kill mat up in here for uh, all the keyboard warriors get fired up on the keyboard. Uh, I know that kill mat or any sound editor doesn't have to cover the entire space, but kill mat also is a heat shield. And this car has none, and we're gonna add a bunch. 
I got a long way to drive and I, it's going to be hot and I want it to be cool inside. I want to be able to keep the inside of the car as nice as possible. So, uh, I'm going to get back to work. I'm going to put the heater box in next. All right. I got the heater box back in. I got the AC controls. All the vacuum lines ran for that. I'm going to set this camera up and see if I can't get the dash back in this thing. All right. So I was checking out this fuse block. Uh, both sides of it just to make sure nothing was cut or anything like that Then I went through and took a nail file uh, cut the end off of it so it fit down inside these let's see here it's hard to do with one hand get it to where y'all can see it here anyways Well, the battery died and I didn't notice it. Um, I got it all back together. Uh, some awesome things I've already noticed. Uh, the courtesy lights come on in the floorboard. Loving that. Looks like the headlights. Oh, I don't know if you can see. They're working. Heck yeah. Changing that switch, uh, I do believe, helped us. Oh, what? <laughs> well, on each side's working, but one's a high and one's a low. Let's check that again. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, that's not hooked up. We'll have to work on that. Well, let's see if she'll fire up or not. Fired right back up. That's what we wanted to hear. Tony and Jeff from TN Auto Glass are here to put in the windshield. We're going to watch them work. You can watch them instead of me for a while.
All right, I'd forgotten about this. The uh, back side of that is just welded in from the factory. I don't know what I'm gonna do to fix it, but I need to do it before we put any more of the kill mat and stuff down. So let me figure this out and uh, I'll show you what I end up doing here. All right, so here's my method. I've got the back part of that clamped with a very small pair of locking pliers. So we can do all this with one hand. Well, it keeps coming out a little more every time, so I'm just gonna keep working with it. I'll show you when it's done. All right, I've got it locked on there really good. I believe that it's gonna come right on out. There it is. Now we gotta figure out what to do to, I guess I'll just weld that back in. So I'll show you when it's done. This isn't something I don't think you'll be able to see it at all as I'm doing it, so. Got that little guy welded back in. I run the nut or the bolt back in it just so to have a place so I wouldn't lose it. Uh, I'm gonna continue on with what I was doing, putting down this kill mat. I thought I was done with mouse house material, but see this hole? Yep, there's a little more. I gotta get that out. That right there will cause rust on the outside for sure. Well, if that was to get any water into it. All right, we got it all cleaned out. I'll be sure to check that other side too, because that's something we don't want to have to deal with later. I took the uh, speaker out, the six by nine. Yep, it's another mouse house. Man, this thing was infested at one time. Went ahead and put some kill mat back in there. I got this thing cleaned out. All right, well, I got a lot of the kill mat in, but it did not have enough, so we won't be able to put the carpet in on this episode, but uh, maybe the next one. We'll see how it goes. I had to order another case. So if you're gonna order it and do as much as I did, you need two cases. All right, so last night before I stopped, I put all the cow stuff back in including the windshield wiper uh, transmissions and all and without any water on this windshield they barely actually they're doing better today than yesterday they just don't have enough power to move so i don't know if it were raining if it would work or not they won't even reset so, um, I don't know what the fix is for another motor, for a windshield wiper motor. I... Also, these blades are really good blades. However, let's get them through their cycle here. See? So, I kind of want to try it, but I'm going to try some different blades. I bought these Bosch blades. They're just too big for this car. So, as far as like how bulky they are. So I'm going to try to find something smaller, more streamlined. Anyways, um, when I pulled it out to put the windshield in, which did turn out great. I'm very happy with the windshield and how it turned out. But with that being said, um, I pulled it outside. Now both front calipers are locked up. So I've got a fix for that. and It's coming, but it ain't here yet. So there'll be no cruising this thing today. All right, so the budge is starting to get tight and carpet is, you know, like 300 bucks. Um, I would much rather spend $300 on, I can think of tons of stuff. Um, so anyways, this carpet's actually not in bad shape. It just looks nasty. So I'm going to vacuum it off and pressure wash it and then we'll dye it and see how it turns out. I think it'll be plenty good enough for me 
running this car. All right, so we're gonna do a little comparison. I've got good old purple power. That's actually not what's in this. This is sun gold, and I've mixed it up. Um, you can buy this on Amazon. It's supposed to work really well. I'm gonna do part of the carpet with this, and then I do have just some traditional purple power. We'll do the other side with this, and we'll see which one comes cleaner. Um, I'm curious to see myself uh, which one works better. If you're wondering uh, what Sun Gold is, this is it. Buy it on Amazon. I actually had a rep come by my car lot and I bought some. Uh, it was cheaper than I could get it online, but I had to buy more than I probably really needed. So. So, womp, womp, womp. all the actual pressure washing videos got corrupted. They won't play. I don't know. Whatever, they, they won't play. So, uh, the moral of the story out of the two, the Sun Gold did not do very much at all, and I ended up doing both sides in purple power. Um, now I'm going to take you to where I'm dying it. Carpet's been outside all day. I'm getting ready to throw some vinyl and fabric dye on it. This particular one is medium gray. excited to show you all this for a while so I ordered this off eBay it is an eBay purchase but it's DH racing is the company that made it and it is absolutely beautiful um, it comes with the brass uh, drain plug the cheaper ones do not have this this one also has a provisions for the uh, automatic transmission if you don't have one you don't have to use it, it has the proper sized inlets and outlets twin fans shroud it was on sale uh, on sale but anyways um i hope it works out good but we're gonna see if we can fit this thing in there i gotta take these uh shipping foams out before we get it in there but yeah it is beautiful let's see if i can get it in so i got a platinum pro condenser 
man, they pack this thing well. Uh, I'm going to pull it out of this box and take a look at it, but I just thought I'd show you how well it mean. It was that piece that's way down there was at the top up here too, but that's one well-packed condenser. All right, so I got to drop down in there. It's a little high. It's not too bad though. I think we can work with it. Uh, clearance seems good. Fits really well. Condenser and all, just everything just slid right together. But the hold down is gonna need gonna need some mods. So where the old fan was, I had to trim that back all the way across. I kind of liked this part. I may try to keep it, but all this basically hits that shroud that's in there and it makes it really tough to get in place. So uh, I'm probably just gonna trim that down with the uh, death wheel and just get rid of it. I think it'll be fine. Worst case scenario, uh, we'll build something, but I'd really like to be able to use this if I could. I cut the entire front off the radiator support, bolts in beautifully, very strong. I'm not worried about that at all. The uh, condenser sits back behind it really nicely. I am gonna put some something protective between those. I don't want them to rub. Then we'll move on from that. So this is the same material I'd gotten to put on the straps for the uh, gas tank. I'm gonna run a little bit down there. On second thought, I'm gonna pull this back out and mount that at the top in here somewhere. I just don't like how it's just kind of hanging out in there. So we're gonna fix that. All right, so I came in here, a little red Loctite, and I made some little brackets. I'll tell you what those brackets are out of, but I have no idea. They're just something I just had laying around. They were aluminum. Got a little, little much red Loctite on that one. Same thing on the other side. Boom, and then over on this side, just a couple of stainless screws. So that's in there good now. It'll be out of the way and it won't rub the radiator. Now I'm with the radiator back in. Here's what she looks like all in there. All clearanced out, it doesn't touch anything. Uh, we still gotta hook up the cooling fans and all the lines, but I'm pretty happy with how. While I've got all this apart, I'm gonna change this hose and I think I'm gonna change this thermostat. I may regret that, but I'm sure it needs one. Let's see if I can get in there and get it out. We'll see what happens. I'm just gonna take a wild guess and say that thermostat wasn't gonna work. We drove it a little bit and it wasn't even enough to heat it up. Uh, we'll clean all this out and get a new thermostat in there. This thing is hard to get out of that little spot, but it is possible. All right, I got all that down there cleaned up on the intake. Got this cleaned up, even cleaned up the water neck just a little bit. I'll show you all this. This is gonna save us. See that pitting right there? This was gonna be really hard to seal, so with this plastic and silicone style uh, gasket, you can actually put a little silicone on the water neck and then use this gasket and it'll, it should seal up just fine. Um, so I'm gonna get all this put back together. I'll show you when I get it all back done. All right, so the back hole on that water neck is stripped. Um, I might have to put a helicoid or something in it. So, I'm gonna... so I went out and got a thread repair kit. Uh, it's got helicoid coils in it and uh, a thread, a tap and all, everything all together except for everything but a drill bit. But the way this is made, I don't think I can get anything in there without taking this top plenum off. I'm gonna try, but I may have to take the plenum off. I really don't wanna do that, but we'll see how it goes. I was able to get the top of the plenum just to unbolt right here since we've had it off recently. Didn't tear any of the gaskets so far, but now I can get down into this and we can um, I'll have to take this back off so I can drill it and put that helical in. But anyways, we'll get to it. 
So I'm going to put this down in the hole, find the bottom, kind of mark it with my finger. And I know I'm going to give myself just a little extra room. I'll put, mark it with a piece of tape. That way we don't go too deep. That'd be a bad day. Alright, so you want to be as vertical as you can be without being kicked any direct one direction. Take a little bit of compressed air and blow that out. Get all that cleaned out now. Cut some new threads. Uh, if you have a T handle, this would be a great place to have to use it. I do not have one. I'm going to mark this to see how low down into the hole we are. You don't have to go all the way, but you got to be able to get the helicore in it. Alright, I'm going to blow this out real good. Take this. That tool slides down, goes right through there, and we'll screw it right in. All right, that made it past the top. So we're in good shape. I'm gonna clean the uh, silicone off and then we're gonna try to put it back together. So after you screw that in, that little chain that you uh, attach to to screw it in needs to be broken off. Should be able to stick a screwdriver down in there. Just give her a little whack. That's supposed to break it off. Yep. I do believe it's broke. See if we can blow it out of there with some air. You like my high quality air nozzle? Yep, it come out. So I'm gonna pull my paper towel out that I was cleaning kept uh, all the stuff in there, getting in there. Oh, dropped it on the ground, that's good for it. Dry it off good and wipe it down. Drop the thermostat back in. See if we can get this on there and the bolt started. I put a little silicone on that. Not a lot, just a little. You don't have to go overboard. It started. Let me get a little ratchet, see if we can get them tight.
All right, so here's what's up. I went to hook up the trans lines. They're really, really hard to get started. I got one to go, but the other one will not go. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. This episode is already gonna be long. I don't even know if I can get this under an hour if I edit it all down. So I'm gonna cut us off right here. So we got a lot done this week. I mean, a lot. So um, we'll see where, what next week brings. I need to finish up a lot of things. Both front calipers are broke. <laughs> They're locked completely down almost now. Um, I'm pretty sure the lines were probably bad, but I got I got big plans for the brakes. Yeah. So uh, anyways, if you're following me on Instagram, you already know. If you're not, go check it out. Forsaken Steel, all lower caps. Um, Anyways, thanks for watching. I'm going to get back after it probably uh, Wednesday or Thursday this week, and we'll just see where we end up, and hopefully I can get you a nice video out next week and we can complete even more stuff. This car is getting really, really close to being actually road-worthy, um, not just running around the block or whatever. So, anyways, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.